In this video, I'm going to talk about the Epiphone Les Paul Standard and why this is a good value for the price. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Also, subscribe and don't forget to hit the bell icon and you can be notified of when I post new content. The Epiphone Les Paul. I've had this one for five years now, maybe. Why I think it qualifies as dirt cheap. If you buy these used, you can usually get them at an incredible value. I got this guitar um, with a case for $300. Now, let's compare that new. It was probably in the $600 range or so, maybe a little bit more. I'm not exactly sure what these uh, the standards go for now new. Um, but if I were to get a Gibson Les Paul instead of an Epiphone, I would probably be spending somewhere between sixteen and sixteen hundred and two thousand dollars, which is quite a bit of money, especially if you're going to be a weekend warrior and go out and play bar gigs and stuff. I don't really want to carry a super expensive guitar where it can get you know messed up. So let's talk a little bit about this guitar. So Epiphone originally was its own company years and years ago. Um, the Beatles are famous for playing what was called an Epiphone Casino. Uh, eventually they were kind of merged uh, with the uh, marquee or the brand of Gibson. And so they're kind of Gibson licensed, but oftentimes they're made by companies overseas. Sometimes they've been made in China, sometimes this one in particular was made in Indonesia. Where they actually kind of compromise is on the hardware and electronics. But I'll get to that more in a minute. So this guitar, again, it's got two humbuckers. It's got Grover tuners, which are actually a really, uh, really good quality tuner. Uh, it does have the binding on it. If you get the Les Paul Studio, it doesn't have all these, uh, the bindings and some of the showy places. It, it, that's where you kind of save your money. Uh, it's got the trapezoid inlays instead of dots. So the electronics. Typically, that's one of the places where um, they'll save a little bit of money. Now, that being said, uh, around 2015 or so, 2016, Gibson started having a lot of quality control issues. Uh, I'm sure you can search YouTube and find videos of people complaining about uh, some of their guitars having issues. Uh, I know at one point they, they started doing a zero fret, which is a fret right in front of the nut that people just hated. They had the robot guitar that had the, the tuners uh, that were that would, it would tune itself, which was not really asked for or needed. Um, and so a lot of people, uh, because of the quality issues, were saying, hey, if you want a Gibson, just go get the Epiphone and then upgrade the hardware, upgrade the, the electronics, basically. The, the, the tuners are, are fine as far as I'm concerned. The, there's still plenty of these out there to be had. There are different versions of this. There's a, there's a pro version that has a few differences with the electronics. I've, I've got one of those. Um, but, you know, again, I've been playing this one for about five years and, and I really, really like it. And, and again, it wasn't that expensive. So some things to look for when you're buying one of these used. With any Les Paul, Always, always check the headstock. You want to look for cracks or any kind of damage. Not that these can't be repaired, but oftentimes when these fall over, that they'll break the headstock off. And you can still get uh, a good value on one that's been repaired properly, but you don't want to pay full price for a used one that's had a repair like that. Usually you can get them to knock off some extra cost. If it's done properly, it's not going to be an issue long term, but again, it does affect the value of the guitar. Second thing, you want to look at the action. You want to sight down the neck of the guitar and look at how high the frets are off of the, the fretboard or how high the strings are off the fretboard. A way that you can check that is to fret at the first fret and just beyond the last fret, and then look and see how much space is between the top of the 12th fret and the bottom of the low E string, and then check the high E string too. Um, if it's way off, that means there's too much curve in the neck, the neck needs to be adjusted. Uh, the angle that it's set in the body 
Uh, that's something else that you want to look at. And again, if you know someone that you know knows guitars, by all means, take them with you when you're looking at used guitars like this. Other things to look for, you know, check and make sure the frets are dressed, which this one, the fret job on it was really good. Uh, and my assumption is that's how it came from the factory because I've, I've looked at some new ones and they all, you know, feel, feel pretty good. So as far as modifications that you can make down the road, there are such a tremendous selection of different pickups that you can get, different electronics. You know, you want to test it uh, when you're buying it, plug it into the amp, uh, move the knobs around, listen for noise. Fortunately, most of these have cavities that you can get in and spray some cleaner if you need to. You want to check the pickup selector switch and then you want to play it. How does it feel? How does it feel? sound? You want to play it through a clean amp and then play it through some distorted tones so you kind of get a feel for what it's going to sound like. And again, it all depends on what style of music you want to play. For classic rock, this is one of the guitars to have because you will get all the ACDC sounds, all the Bad Company sounds, all the Led Zeppelin sounds. Um, you'll be able to cover a lot of them. Now, again, you'll have to do some adjustments with your controls to, to kind of go through the myriad of sounds, plus using um, the different amps. Now, what I'm using today is um, a year 2000, 2001 JCM 2000 Marshall Dual Super Lead. Uh, it's on the classic gain channel, uh, kind of maxed out, and I'm running it through a 112 speaker that's an open back speaker. And it's mic directly, plus I've got a little bit of a room mic, so that's kind of what you're hearing. And it's okay, I would probably, I need to tweak the EQ a little bit, it's a little bit bassy, but... great sounds great again three hundred dollars if you have any comments or any suggestions um, if you've tried some of these and had luck with them or didn't have luck or maybe you've done some upgrades suggest you know suggest some different pickup combinations what have you leave that in the comments below and until next time keep practicing